Danny Phantom is an iconic Nickelodeon television series that won the hearts of millions upon its release. However, it only ran for three seasons because of how expensive it was to animate. During production, Butch Hartman, the same man who famously wrote Fairly Odd Parents, switched to a more expensive animation style that caused the show to run out of budget. While only running for a short period of time from 2004 to 2007, Hartman emphasizes in interviews his love for the show, and even claims that it was arguably one of his most accomplished works. First, let's get some context. Danny Fenton is a teenage boy who lives in Amity Park and is currently in high school. His parents are absolutely obsessed with ghost hunting and have many different gadgets that they use in order to catch these so-called ghosts, one of them being a portal to a ghost realm. One day, Danny walks through it by accident and ends up taking on a half-ghost personality that goes by Danny Phantom. Danny's transformation is explained thoroughly through his iconic theme song, which I'm sure most of you remember jamming to his children. Here are some important characters you should know about before we begin. Danny. He's the main character and the son of Jack and Maddie. He has ghost powers and is called Danny Phantom whenever in ghost form. Jack is Danny's crazy father who's absolutely obsessed with catching ghosts. An honorable mention is that both Jack and Maddie are not portrayed as being absolutely brain dead like most parents are in cartoons around this time period. The Fenton extractor doesn't hurt humans, unless it gets in your hair. <laughs> Maddie is Danny's mother and wife to Jack. She's also completely obsessed with ghosts, but she's slightly more intelligent than Jack. Jazz is Danny's older sister and protector within the show. She cares for Danny deeply and is a good older sister. Sam is Danny's girl best friend and main ally within the entire show, almost sidekick status along with Tucker. Tucker is another one of Danny's best friends and his main bro, Vlad Masters, the main antagonist throughout the entire show a half-ghost man himself who is obsessed with trying to defeat Danny and humiliate his father. More on that ahead. Danny Daniela Phantom is a little girl who Danny is super close with. We'll talk more about that later. She's also a half-ghost and is technically related to Danny, in a way? I'm not sure. Just tune in and find out more about her later. Alright, let's get started. Starting off strong with the episode I remember most from my childhood, Mystery Meat is the first ever Danny Phantom episode and it aired on April 3rd, 2004. The episode begins with Danny chatting with his friends Sam and Tucker about his ghost powers and debating on whether or not he should tell his parents about what's going on with him. As his parents are ghost hunters who continuously think their devices aren't working because they go off near Danny, this conversation gets interrupted though by Sam complaining about the school lunch menu and it doesn't take long until she convinces the school board to change their menu to an all-vegetarian diet. What is this? Grass on a bun? What have you done? Because of this vegetarian change, a mean ghost lunch lady emerges from the ghost realm, sensing that something terrible has happened within the school. She angrily turns into a giant meat monster that Danny has to defeat in order to save the school, and more specifically, Sam, as the lunch lady hates what she's done with her menu. Eventually, Danny defeats the meat lunch lady and all is well within his little world, except perhaps that he and his friends are the ones forced to clean up all the meat remains from the battle. A new love interest is introduced in this episode, and her name is Paulina. Don't worry everyone, I definitely ship Danny and Sam, but I can't ignore what actually went down. The episode begins with Danny having to fight a ghost dragon that appears, and he accidentally takes her amulet. Later, while Danny is at school, he confesses that he wants to take Paulina as his date to the school dance. <laughs> Sam ends up getting in an argument with Paulina and calls her shallow. Paulina takes great offense to this and seeks revenge on Sam by going to the dance with Danny. Because like all of us at home, Paulina assumed that Sam and Danny were already dating. When Danny gives Paulina the amulet that fell out of his backpack, she eagerly takes it and agrees to go to the dance with him. Well, you are kind of cute and you have great taste in underwear. It isn't until later at the mall when she gets upset and turns into a giant raging dragon that Danny realizes the amulet actually causes the wearer to turn into an angry monster whenever mad. I'll go change into that dumb dress I wasn't gonna wear. See ya! Later that night at the dance, Danny tells Paulina that the amulet is actually Sam's in hopes that he might be able to get it back from her. 
This only pisses Paulina off. Sam, later in the bathroom, tells Paulina that she isn't dating Danny, to which Paulina gives the amulet back to Sam and tells her that she only dated Danny because she thought she was stealing him from her. This enrages Sam, but since she already has the necklace on, she turns into a raging dragon. Yep, that's Sam. Danny eventually is able to get the amulet off of her, and the two dance, just like how it should have been from the beginning. Interesting enough, this episode is actually narrated by Tucker throughout. It begins by Tucker explaining that he and Danny have always been friends, that they've always shared basically everything in life with each other. But all that changed when Danny got his ghost powers. It's clear from the beginning that Tucker is extremely jealous of Danny and all that he can do. It's also shown throughout the beginning of the episode that there's a genie wish that grants essentially anybody's wish. Tucker, not intentionally, wishes to have ghost powers, complains about how he wishes he had them too. The genie shows up and grants him his wish, causing him to become half ghost as well. Tucker doesn't take the power seriously and gets in multiple arguments with Danny about how he's showing off too much and that Tucker's allowed to have fun too. I just wanted to let you know I'm gonna start dating Tucker fully. He's much cooler than you are. Danny eventually comes up with a plan to just wish the magical genie ghost into one of his parents' traps. I wish you would disappear inside this thermos! What? No! He then somehow gets Tucker, in a much angrier form than before, to chase him back home to his parents' lab, where he makes Tucker go through a machine that separates his ghost self from his human form. The boys have a long heart-to-heart -heart about what happened, and Danny apologizes for making Tucker feel lesser than him, and he promises to not show off as much as he had been. Bros before ghosts. An interesting foe emerges within this episode, Vlad Masters, who's later known as Vlad Plasmus. The episode begins with Danny's parents taking him and Jazz to their 20th class reunion that is being held at Vlad Masters' mansion. On the way there, Jack, Danny's father, explains that he used to be best friends with Vlad and that he, Vlad, and Maddie, Danny's mother, all used to work together on ghost hunting. One day, while creating their portal, it malfunctioned. More accurately, Jack messed it up, and ectoplasm got onto Vlad, causing him to age prematurely and ruin his social life. Little did Danny's family know that it also turned Vlad into a part ghost, just like Danny. After the accident, Jack and Vlad never spoke again, but Jack is hoping to mend things during their trip. You know, Jack, the Dairy King's ghost could haunt these very halls. Don't get the bags! Once at the mansion, Danny slowly finds out about Vlad's secret and even fights him without knowing his true identity. When Danny loses the battle and passes out, Vlad realizes that the ghost boy is Jack's son and instantly tries to meddle with their relationship and take Danny under his wing so that he can get back at Jack for the horrible life he's caused him. Danny, now trapped in an anti ghost box cannot help his family. That is, until he gets let out of his prison by a friendly ghost? Not all ghosts are bad, I guess. Danny saves his parents from getting harmed by Vlad, but he makes it look like his father is actually the hero. Jack, you did it! It was nothing, Mom. Uh all is well by the end of the episode, except that Vlad promises to meet him again. Dun dun da. Later in this episode, we find Jazz being extremely suspicious. The whole episode, Jazz slowly becomes more and more suspicious towards Danny, and even goes to the lengths of telling her parents that there is something up with him, only to be denied over and over again. She even asks his friends multiple times, but they ain't snitching, as they never tell her a word. You have to talk to somebody, Danny. You barely have any friends. <laughs> It isn't until the very end of the episode that she actually confirms his secret identity as he's the one who continuously saves her. She doesn't confront him though, as she wants him to feel comfortable telling her himself eventually. Uh, uh. This episode begins with Danny's mother wanting to spend more time with him. After realizing that him growing up has caused the two to grow apart, she books a surprise mother-son convention trip. Their flight unexpectedly takes a bad turn, and the two are forced to jump out of the plane into what seems to be the middle of nowhere in a forest. The two then run into Vlad coincidentally. Or is it coincidentally? Maddie is at first relieved, until Vlad confesses that he wishes to steal her away from her husband. And as a lonely single man in your 40s, might I suggest internet dating or a cat? 
She and Danny storm away from the mansion but are only met with obstacles. Meanwhile, back at home, Jack and Jazz are bonding unexpectedly as well. Ghosts are attacking the house, and Jack is pleasantly surprised to witness Jazz in action. Maddie comes to the conclusion that they need to go back to Vlad's mansion in order to call for help since they can't fight off ghosts forever. Danny against this idea since he finds it disgusting that Vlad wants to get with his mother reluctantly agrees. He then transforms into his ghost self to beat up Vlad before he can be too creepy. Danny and his mother steal one of Vlad's helicopters and promise not to tell the rest of the family about all that happened. Meanwhile, Jack tells Jazz not to mention anything that happened either, as they had fought ghosts together the entire time. By the end of this episode, Danny and his mother grew fond of each other, and Jazz has a newfound respect for ghost hunting and her father's crazy antics after fighting ghosts with him all weekend. Hmm. <clears throat> Starting season two off strong with relationship drama, this episode begins with Sam wishing that Danny never existed. Dark days, I wish I had never even met you! How did this argument come to be, you might ask? Well, basically, Danny was being silly again and putting Paulina's feelings before Sam's. Danny and Tucker had promised Sam that they would go to the movies with her, but the second they're asked by Paulina to go to her quinceanera, they bail on Sam's plans and go with that instead. Frustrated, as this hasn't been the first time she's been left in the dust, Sam wishes that she'd never met Danny. The next day, Sam approaches the boys, but neither of them know who she is. She resorts to trying to look pretty, so the boys will notice her, which works. She surrendered her individuality for a boy. I'm so proud of her! She eventually convinces Danny to go through his portal like how he had before. That way, he could get his ghost powers back. Since she's the one that had originally got him to go into the portal the first time, if he had never met her, he wouldn't have ever gotten his ghost powers. After turning Danny back to normal. And who the heck are you? Uh, I'm Paulina? Sam finally has the idea to just wish that she and Danny had never had that fight in the first place. This ends up working in their favor and all is forgiven. Danny and Tucker even apologize to Sam for not going to the movies with her like they'd originally planned and she forgives them. Danny just needs to stop messing with Paulina and none of this mess would have happened. I'm just saying. In this later episode, Danny gets tired of always having to deal with ghost activities and decides to split his two personalities so that his ghost form can take care of the bad guys. I'm Danny Phantom, full-time superhero! While his normal form can have fun with his friends. While this works for a short amount of time, Super Danny becomes frustrated that he has to deal with everything on his own and wishes to be merged back with Fun Danny. In order to merge back together, Sam and Tucker suggest that Danny go back into the Dreamcatcher that had originally merged them, but this ends up just complicating things further by making them look identical and causing them both to have their powers again, just not to their full extent. The two end up having to work together to defeat Technus, the main villain of this episode. During their battle, they fly through the Dreamcatcher yet again and are returned to normal. After the battle is over, they realize that on one side of the Dreamcatcher it says merge, and the other side it says separate, meaning they just weren't going through the catcher correctly. Maybe if they had just read the terms and conditions, none of this would have happened. I mean, Danny's probably still asleep. Sup? Danny! Danny? The first 50-minute special of the series, The Ultimate Enemy, looks into the future, where we find a very intriguing foe. The episode starts with us learning of a new supervillain, who is terrorizing Amity Park and causing chaos for those around it. The Fenton family are seen trying to ward the villain off to no avail. The episode then cuts to Clockwork and his minions watching from the future, claiming that Danny Phantom is the one who grows up to be the most dangerous ghost ever. And in order to protect the future, he must be eliminated now. Clockwork sends a ghost named Box Lunch to defeat Danny, but Danny gets rid of him. and gets the answer document from his teacher for the big exam coming up so that he can cheat while he's at it. The minions are confused as to why Clockwork isn't sending another ghost after Danny, to which he replies, his future is sealed. A new ghost monster appears from the future and appears to be a hybrid of two ghosts Danny has fought before. After defeating this monstrous creature, the trio is transported to Clockwork's lair. Once there, Danny tries to fight Clockwork, which proves to be futile, since he can literally control time. Tucker notices that when wearing one of the time medallions, the wearer is immune to time-based attacks. He puts one onto Danny, and Sam and the three are then free from Clockwork's attacks. Clockwork decides to send them away, but they're sent to the future this time instead of back to their normal lives. Their adventure in the future is short-lived, though, as Sam and Tucker take off their time medallions to escape evil Danny. I surrendered my human half a long time ago.
and evil Danny also steals Danny's time medallions so that he can control the past, present, and future to make sure he turns out just the way he likes it. Evil Danny disguises himself as regular Danny and tells his friends that all is well, when all is indeed not, and he ends up throwing regular Danny into the ghost realm in hopes that he won't be able to intervene with any of his plans. In present time, Jazz finds out about Dark Danny and tries to stop him, but he knocks her away. He then goes to the school to cheat on the test, which was the trigger to cause him to become evil. When Jazz wakes up, she sends a rope into the ghost portal in hopes to somehow find Danny. Meanwhile, inside the ghost realm, all of Danny's enemies from the future are ganging up on him and beating him up to get revenge for all that he's done to them. Danny ends up unlocking one of his ghostly abilities and pushes all of the ghosts off of him. Danny, realizing from Jazz's note that something must have happened with Vlad, uses a portal to get to him. Vlad tells Danny the story of how evil Danny came to be. After Danny's family and friends died in an accident, he moved in with Vlad and asked him to remove his ghost self. The only problem was that once he did, his ghost self ripped out Vlad's ghost self and then became evil as Vlad is naturally evil-natured. This then started the 10-year rampage that evil Danny has been on. It's also presumed that evil ghost Danny killed his human self, as human Danny doesn't exist in the future. Till it's time for you to be blown everywhere. Danny then goes back to present time in order to fight Dark Danny and save his family. He's too late as his family almost blows up in an explosion when all of a sudden clockwork stops time for him and allows him a chance to go back and not cheat on his test. Danny confesses to his teacher about what he was about to do, and all goes back right with the world. Danny eventually approaches his sister since she revealed that she knew about his secret and they talk it out. From here on out, Jazz is on his side and is an ally just like Sam and Tucker. Almost immediately following Jazz finding out about Danny's secret, it's shown that she is quite annoying and anal towards him about basically anything that he does. Throughout the day, Jazz attempts to rescue Danny when battling basically any ghost, but instead of helping him, she continuously ends up hurting him instead and getting in his way. Hacked into my private ghost files? How'd you get the password? It is Paulina Fenton. Danny eventually yells at her and tells her that she isn't a good ghost hunter, which hurts her feelings enough to cause her to run away from home. Good going, Danny. Jazz runs to Vlad's mansion. Why, you might ask? I have no clue. Danny, finding out that his sister is missing, searches for her in the ghost zone, but gets captured by Skulker. Skulker takes him to Vlad's mansion, where Vlad tells Jazz that in order to prove her loyalty to him, she must fight her brother. The two pretend to fight until Vlad announces Jazz's victory. But please, just follow my lead. He gets close enough to her that she's able to punch him in the face. The two then escape and reconcile. Jazz and Danny both apologize. Jazz for being overbearing and Danny for not understanding that she was just trying to help. This later episode begins with Vlad trying to create clones of Danny. It's shown that there are three messed up versions of these clones in which he sends after Danny in order to capture him. Once he defeats one of these clones, he goes home only to find a small girl that looks alarmingly like him. Can I help you? Yes! No, not you! Not so loud! She introduces herself as Daniela. Danny. For sake of the video, I'm going to be calling Danny Daniela in order to avoid confusion. Before Danny can call his parents to confirm her identity or not, they get attacked by yet another ghost. Daniela transforms into her ghost self, which confuses Danny. How Later in the episode, after Danny asks Daniela where she got her powers, she ominously tells him that he'll find out everything soon enough. Danny then runs into Vlad, is shot down by Daniela and it is then revealed that Daniela sees Vlad as her father. Danny is captured, and Vlad announces he's been lonely and has been attempting to create the perfect son for himself, basing him off of Danny. Vlad shows no remorse for all the other clones that die, which worries Daniela, but her love for Vlad and her want to be someone's daughter overpower her unease, and he continues to hurt Daniela. Meanwhile, Sam and Tucker notice Danny getting captured and stealing one of his parents' bikes in order to reach him faster. Danny slowly gets under Daniela's skin and she finally realizes that Vlad will kill her just like every other failed stereotype, and she takes Danny's side. Danny escapes, and just at the right moment, Sam and Tucker show up to slam into Vlad. Daniela then punches him and they all escape. Thank you! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, you guys! I'll never take you for granted again. While researching this movie episode, I found something very interesting. Freak Show. The main villain of the episode uses a gauntlet, much like Thanos in the Marvel movies. He has to put certain gems in it in order to do certain things. Anyway, moving on. I'm including this episode for one reason and one reason only. 
Danny reveals himself live on television and his parents find out about his secret for the first time ever. Mm, Paulina Fenton. Hey, I finally wrapped my mind around it. Okay. Much to his surprise, they're actually quite accepting of this. Even so, at the end of the episode, Danny makes everyone forget the last three days in order for everything to go back to normal. This episode begins with the guys in white, kind of a spoof on Men in Black, wanting to buy all of Fenton's works. Originally, Danny's parents decline, but they're offered with so much money that they would be stupid not to take the offer. Jack, you can't sell our home! Wow, that's a lot of zeros! They move into a large mansion, and Danny starts to neglect his friends and school duties since he's distracted by all of his newfound gadgets and wealth. Sam and Tucker become suspicious of the men in white, as they're normally quite rude to the Fentons and have even referred to them as crackpots. Sam and Tucker sneak into Danny's parents' old lab, only to discover that the men in white's real motive is to send an ecto-missile into the ghost realm to destroy all ghosts. What the men in white don't know is that the ghost realm is the counterpart to Earth. If you destroy one dimension, you are destroying both of them. Sam and Tucker try to convince Danny to help them defeat the men in white, but it's useless trying to get into his new wealthy thick skull. They both go and try to defeat the men in white themselves, but are captured in the process. Slowly but surely, Danny realizes that he's being an and goes to save them. Danny uses the portal located in Vlad's mansion, as his mansion is much closer to the ghost realm than going all the way home. Once in the ghost realm, he has to make his way all the way to his family's portal, which proves to take some time. Once there, he notices the men in white about to shoot their missile. Before it can reach the inside of the ghost realm, Danny and other ghosts send a large boulder right at the portal in order to smash the missile. So. That was a novelty rocket? The men in white give up and return Fenton to his family and they all decide the rich lifestyle just isn't for them. It's cousin reunion time! This episode begins with Daniela desperately trying to find Danny in hopes that he can somehow help her stabilize herself. She's still not completely healthy, as stated before Vlad created her as an experiment hoping to create the perfect son. Oh yes, I agree, Maddie. It's time for a little research. Vlad, spying on Daniela, decides to hire Valerie, another ghost hunter in town that was featured in The Ultimate Enemy, to capture Daniela for him. Valerie is successful in capturing her. But when Daniela explains that she's searching for Danny Phantom, Valerie gets excited and tells her that she wants to meet him as well, when in reality, she just wants to destroy them both. Once Danny and Daniela are both back at the mansion, Vlad begins to run experiments on Daniela to further do research on his clone-making abilities. He ends up completely wiping her out, though. Bye, Danny. Thanks for... Oh, no. <sighs> only for her to regenerate into a completely stable ghost kid. All right, let's go, Daniela! She kicks Vlad's butt and is finally free. The last thing we see is Valerie finally finding out that Vlad is indeed an evil half-ghost. She vows to make sure he pays in the future. Ending the show off strong with this one-hour movie special, Phantom Planet, marks the 53rd and 54th episode overall, and the sad goodbye to a beloved Nickelodeon original. The movie begins with Vlad swearing once and for all that he's going to get rid of Danny Phantom. He creates a team of ghost capturers called Masters Blasters that proved to be much more effective in capturing ghosts than Danny ever was. Also, meanwhile, Danny's parents are thrown in jail by the Master Blasters with accusations of harboring the fugitive ghost boy, Danny Phantom. Feeling broken and defeated, Danny decides to go back into his parents' portal and get rid of his ghost self. Once he's done with that, the portal breaks down and explodes. Sam and Tucker are quite annoyed with Danny and his decision-making. I said, go and go! It worked! But Danny and Jazz are able to bail his parents out of jail and he no longer has to fight ghosts. However, because Danny is no longer offering his services, the Master Blasters start charging an insane amount of money if anybody wants them to get rid of ghosts. Okay, marketing major coming in really clutch right now. We love understanding how supply and demand works. Anyway, at the same time, the World News reports that there's a giant asteroid, Disasteroid, heading straight towards Earth. Vlad announces his secret identity and claims that he is the only person on Earth that could possibly save them by making the asteroid intangible, the power that makes things be able to pass through other things. He says he will only do this if the government makes him the ruler of the world and gives him $500 billion. If you're the ruler of the world, you have all the money, silly Vlad. Anyway, once he reaches the asteroid, nothing works, because the asteroid is actually made of anti-ectochemicals that nullify all ghost powers. You have to help me. You wouldn't turn your back on an old friend, would you? Jack is with Vlad, but upon realizing that he's actually an evil person, he chooses not to help him. Oh my god, get wrecked. 
Moving on, Danny goes to the Ghost Realm to try and get Ghost to rally and make the Earth intangible together, but all of his former foes just make fun of him and hit him with their powers since he's now defenseless. Being hit with all these powers causes Danny's own powers to regenerate and he's able to escape. His new plan is to capture a bunch of ghosts from the Ghost World and have the people of Earth make tunnels with metal in order for him to surround the Earth with ghosts to fuse their energy and make the world intangible. Okay, it's honorable mention time, Sam and Danny kiss for good luck. We shipped it all along, folks. Let's all just be grateful it actually happened. Danny is successful somehow in intangibling the entire world. Where's the asteroid? And he reveals his identity to everyone. Everyone cheers him on and regards him as a hero. They make statues of him all around Amity Park as well. More Sam and Danny content, here we go, they talk about their feelings for each other and end up dating right at the end. Ah, that's awesome. Literally, the best ending to a TV show so far. That is all I have for Danny Phantom, folks. It's a shorter refresher than I normally do, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. I thoroughly enjoy taking you guys on these journeys with me. Definitely please hit the subscribe button and don't forget to like if you enjoyed it. Have a wonderful, spooky day. Bye-bye.